in the see, morning. after they've been ironed, the skin make it to be rich. It can deliver in, in, in a lot of all different kind of ways when the Holy Spirit moves. But just take it like that. It's a complete failure. But if the Holy Ghost moves, this can elevate you to a standard that you you didn't expect you would reach. The Bible is a religious form that evolved out of the great Christian revival of 1860 and 1861, um, which led to a, a synthesis, a combination of African as well as European Christian traditions. On the sugar plantations, when Africans came here, they were not allowed to practice their religion. Uh, the practicing of African religions were suppressed by law. Now, after emancipation, when you had the Great Revival and the emergence of revivalism, that allowed for former enslaved Africans, in a way, to retain their African religious practices. Wale, wale. Revivalism is an umbrella term, and under that term you have two branches of, of revivalism. You have a 60 Zion and 61 revival. No, the, 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 the numbers has to do with the year that they were formed. 60 Zion was formed in 1860, and 61 revival was formed in 1861. <laughs> The revival cosmology is a very complex one, and it's complex because revivalism is a syncretic religion that fuses African beliefs or African practices and also Christian practices. Both 60 Zion and 61 Revival believe in the Trinity, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The earlier form of revival was the more Christian derived, although it still had African influences, and this is identified as revival Zion. They believe in the heavenly realm, so they believe in the saints, the deceased saints from the Bible, uh, they believe in the angels. 61 revival, which is the more deep rooted African practice, they believe in earthbound messengers, so the deceased. In 61, or Foko, um, Maya, but the spirit possession is um, a lot more evident. Earlier researchers who were looking at the form uh, call it Pocomania, which they ascribe to um, a, a translation from Spanish into English as Little Madness. Um, later research has um, more or less discounted that interpretation. Revivalism is heavily spirit-centered. Everything revivalists do, whether they, they, the hymns, song, the chanting, the drumming, it is to invoke a particular spirit or invoke a particular messenger. And because revivalism is spirit-centered, then possession is an essential element of revival worship and ritual. And in fact, uh, Thanksgiving tables or revival tables generally uh, are set and are held to invoke the spirit. The revival table is, in, in many respects, a, a, a critical part of the ceremonial. Revival tables were set up for Thanksgiving or for other kinds of purposes, healing, and had different items placed on these tables that represented different, different things.
a table is set with an arrangement, an assemblage of, of, of various things. So you may find on a table uh, flowers, uh, bread, carbonated beverages, uh, fruits, and so on. The, the candles and the fruits and the, and the bread all have um, different meanings and, di and significances. And depending on the purpose, there might be different um, items placed on the table. In the, the revival setup scenario, you would also um, find a seal. And the seal usually consists of a, a, a basin of water um, on a stand that would have um, maybe a, a couple of sprigs of leaf of life in it. And that also has a significance to it. You may notice in revivalism, they use a lot of natural things. Uh, we believe in, in, in the earth and, and, and the relationship between our spiritual existence and Mother Nature. Music is very important to revivalism because music is uh, an avenue through which spirit possession then takes place. Drums are used to induce spirit possession and also music not only through instruments as we know them but you can use your body as an instrument to produce music. You stamp your feet, uh, you chant and also you sing uh, and that's that creates a rhythmic pattern which then vibrates and uh, spirits or messengers are then um, called through those motions and sounds of the body so music in revivalism is created uh, by way of the body and by way of instruments used in this space what is interesting about that is that some of the hymns that are sung are sung not only in revival churches but in other Christian denominations as well. Who will answer glad to say, Here am I, sent me, sent me. This also speaks to the evolution of the Bible over time. It has, it has become, in many instances, um, more of a Pentecostal uh, religious practice and observance. And um, so has become more aligned with um, traditional Christian practice, particularly in, 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 in an African-American or African Afro-Caribbean sense as well. What I gather is that a part of the modernization of revivalism has to do with revivalists seeking legitimacy from traditional Christian um, uh, churches and that is as a result of the colonial legacy that Jamaicans have inherited from enslavement. So persons still view revivalism as, as a cult, um, satanic worship, uh, evil. Um, and because of that, revivalists are currently trying to incorporate more traditional Christian ways of worship into their rituals uh, and into, into their ceremonies. So there is still that tension, um, that colonial tension that continues to see African ways of worship as backward and uncivilized. From the early days of the, of the um, establishment of revival churches in Jamaica, there, there has been a, a kind of suspicion about the, um, the religious practice. And it was, it was considered, particularly by the established churches in the early days, to be something that was not um, particularly welcome or something that should be um, practiced. So 
what would happen is that um, revival adherents or some revival adherents would go to their Anglican or Roman Catholic Church in the morning and go to their revival services afterwards. So there was a kind of duality in practice. Revival has become um, more accepted in more recent years, particularly in the post-independence period, um, as a result of um, research which has exposed um, the, 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 the practices as being not harmful to uh, people's lives and livelihoods, um, but just seen as another religious practice which has you know, elements coming back, going back to our ancestral roots in Africa, as well as the influence of Europe in terms of you know, the structure of the religious practice. The ethos of revivalism is deeply African and you can see that even today by the way they perform their rituals, the way they chant, uh, their way of dressing and as you move across revival bands today, revivalists are actually proud to tell you two things. One, they are revivalists and two, they are of African descent. So you'll have for example a Thanksgiving table that is dedicated to the African order. And what that Thanksgiving table is, is a recreating of, of an African imagination, of an African consciousness within this space. So they will use elements that they consider to be African. For example, roasted food uh, on, on the table, um, the, the dressing of the space to represent that of an African authentic space. So yes, revivalists are still carrying on an African consciousness and that has to do generally with a revival of, of African pride and African consciousness that is happening currently within the Western world. Revivalism today is alive and well in Jamaica. So for example, you have revival bands right across the island of Jamaica. And interestingly, what I've observed among revival bands that you now have a lot of young people in revivalism, which is also ensuring um, its, its longevity and its survival. There is movement between um, Jamaica and other parts of the world where practicing revivalists have perhaps migrated, established churches in the countries that they have moved to. And so you do have pockets of revival practice that have spread beyond the shores of Jamaica. And that also speaks to the strength of the, of the practice. It, it really is a strong and um, self-sustaining practice. We need to recognize and safeguard revival because it represents something that actually emanated, that came out of and was created in Jamaica as, as a traditional practice. And it has survived pretty strongly from, from 1860 until now. Uh, so it, it, is, it, is, it, it is part of who we are as a people, although not everybody is a revivalist. It still is an element of our cultural heritage that um, should should be preserved. Revivalism is significant to our Jamaican culture because it provides a link and a connection to our African past and to our African identity. And revivalism provides a space 
where Jamaicans, particularly of the working class, can convene and continue to construct and reconstruct an African identity, not only for themselves, for, but for their children. One thing I'd like to add in, in terms of the, the, the protection of revival as um, a cultural form, the government of Jamaica has nominated revival to the representative list of the Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humanity, which is a program run by UNESCO that gives recognition to intangible cultural heritage. Um, so we, we have submitted a nomination to UNESCO and look forward to, to revival being inscribed on the um, representative list of intangible cultural heritage. Yeah.